Thank you for tuning in today. We have a very special guest, um, not because she is one of my friends. We've traveled together at Wilberforce University, but she is an author, an educator, a event planner. I guess that's what we would call it for what she does with her uh, brunch. That is a really interesting program that she will tell you about. So we would like to welcome Ms. J. Wilkerson today. Well, hello, hello, hello. It's such an honor to be here today, especially with you, because of all that you do. And so thank you again for my invite, and uh, I'm enjoying myself thus far. Awesome. Glad that you are here. So uh, what have you been up to since we've last talked? Like, I know you have two books, um, and I would love to hear about that. Okay, well, actually, there are, there are two children's books that I have, and then the last book that I have, which is the third, is a critical thinking book. So the first is a story about a young boy by the name of Matumbo, who's from Cape Town, South Africa. The second is about a young boy by the name of Juan, who is from Mexico City, Mexico. And the last is a critical thinking book. And what you will notice is I specifically picked locations around this world because it's important for each one of us to know about diversity, culture, and to break down those stereotypes, especially in this day and time. Mm -hmm. So the exposure, the exposure of different yeah. cultures and locations, which um, you and I both have been exposed to so much, I guess we would be considered cultured based off our experiences in the university course at Wilberforce. Uh, so you brought yeah. pretty much all of those things to light through your books. Yes, yes. I had the opportunity to, you know, it, it, if, I call, if I go back and I reminisce, it causes me to think about when we traveled to Africa together and went along that journey and all that we learned in that process and, you know, all that we did in that process. And so this is what helped to develop the writer that I became, that I didn't know that I was going to be. That is so exciting. Um, because we didn't have camera phones, thank God, because some of that stuff might not be appropriate. But, <laughs> um, but I'm just playing. I'm just playing. We, we were good. We were good. Trust me, we were good. <laughs> but um, that those trips were like once in a lifetime. And as I encourage my scholars all the time, I'm like, look, get involved with something. We have to travel for free. Not once, but twice. And mm -hmm. Some of those trips and where we stayed, in, you, you know, those are once in a lifetime places that as an adult, I'm like, I want to go back, but I don't want to pay my money. So, <laughs> but anywho, um, so you have three books and then your critical thinking book, uh, what subjects are covered in that one? Uh, yeah. On the side, yes. Well, listen, on the side of the critical thinking, uh, never knowing that I would go that route to write those books. Um, it was, I mean, what I, what I considered to be a miraculous story due to the fact that I wasn't looking to be a part of this uh, group that ended up doing the critical thinking book. But a lady approached me and said, you know what? She said, I've got doctors and I'm getting together and we're going to do some writing. And I quickly explained, I am not. A doctor. So to collaborate with doctors was a huge thing to me, but they kept on insisting. They continued to say, she continued to say, well, Dr. Wilkerson, well, I'm not Dr. Wilkerson. I don't know how many times I could say it. To the point when I got ready to be a part of that book, now she didn't put I was a doctor, but she did put, she did put MED. And I, at that time, I didn't have my master's in education or anything along that line. But what it showed me is is that when people see you from a certain light, you can't change their perception the majority of time. That's true. You just have to learn how to be. I had to play the game of let's catch up because apparently they see something in me that um, causes them to continue to call me doctor. And I mean, literally the rest was history uh, on that. Well, you, you can't dim your light if others see you shining. Uh, that that's something that mm. <laughs> you, you can't I mean that's that's facts and I know I do it myself 
sometimes, but that's something I have learned in this entrepreneurial journey. If other people see you shine and don't dim yourself, because I'm like, you got three books, yeah. you got other stuff going on. Your light is shining. So you deserve the seat at that table. Just, you know, clear as day. And I get where you're coming from. You're like, hey, I didn't go to school to be a doctor. I'm not this. I'm just little old me. No, you a big, bright, shining star to them. So that's why they thought of you that way. So you got to change your perspective. Well, let me tell you, that means, <laughs> that means so much. Honestly, that means so much coming from you because I know that you are working on the youth that are our future. And there are a few people who believe that to that extent nowadays. But I'm so grateful, you know, for that compliment that is given. So I can take it from someone who is displaying greatness, who continues to work with our youth, who continues to have various platforms, but stays humble right there. And so, uh, so thank you. That means a lot coming from you. You are so very welcome. Uh, that this virtual world and different things have just taught, you know, taught me to be that way. But, and you also are an educator? Are you in the school system? Or? Yes. Well, I was in um, Nashville Metro School System for a okay. long period of time, and I stopped teaching. You know, COVID came about, and oh. there's so much that's taking place because of that. But in the meanwhile, I continue to do my writing, and I continue to do my programs um, wow. just because we need community. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. It is. And you didn't talk about one program that I'm like, I need to drive a fly or something up there because I like food. I do. I mean, I know I've lost a lot of weight, but I still like food. Can't help what you like. Now, what is that program? Well, called? it's called Breakfast and the Peeps. And if anyone wants to go to Instagram and join us, again, it's called Breakfast and the Peeps. And we've had it in so many various, lo or in various locations. So everywhere from Chicago to Atlanta to Miami to, I mean, you name it, we've had these breakfasts. And the base of the breakfast is actually just bringing together community. And so it's wow. it's been wonderful because it reminds me of the village that raised the child. It reminds me of the village of the people getting together and actually doing and having community. It's mm -hmm. so fun. It's a great time. And that, that would, because food bring anybody together. You can sit down. <laughs> it does. I mean, and that so many conversations that uh, many families have gotten away from because a lot of people don't sit down and eat together anymore. You know, so. Now you I said something. <laughs> you said something right there. No, you did. You really said something right there because when I did Breakfast in the Peeps, I was literally just going to go get breakfast. That was it. It was going to be myself. I was going to go to grab my breakfast and I was going to come back. And I wow. just felt like I was supposed to bring somebody with me, you know, like a God thing, God being like, hey, you better do this. And so I paid attention and I brought one person and then the one grow, grew into 10 and then the 10 grew into 50 and then before I know it I'm looking up and it's been times where we've had 80 people there we did this seafood and breakfast uh, restaurant and I look up and I'm looking around and I'm like there are 80 people here at this event amazing from all walks of life you know whether you were a musician an author a doctor a lawyer a producer teachers preachers I mean you name it people were here and what I recognized was that not everybody is going to the club not everybody's going to church, but there are going to be a number of people who will come and get together because like you said earlier, everybody got to eat. Everybody has to eat. And so for everybody to get together and come to breakfast in the peaks, it just, it's an exciting moment for me, you know, really exciting. And we invite, when I say we, breakfast in the peaks invites anybody. So like I said, you're more than welcome to get on the page and bring your friends, bring your family. And if we're in your city, you'll see because we'll have it posted. And uh, I just look forward to those opportunities. So when you come to San Antonio, I hope I'm available because I like to go to, <laughs> I like to sit down and then good engaging conversation is always something that I like to do, especially when we talk about culture or current events or things like that. 
Um, yeah. They really don't know the history um, of your experience, of your educational journey to success. You did start at Wilberforce and uh, we spent some time together traveling and things like that. But I do remember a particular tour. I believe we was even roommates on that tour. And, you know, you was walking through the campus of uh, in Daytona Beach and you was like, I'm going to go here. I was like, she just going to up and leave Wilberforce and, and go, <laughs> go to Batum. <laughs> uh, but, you know. Ooh, I was low-key upset. I mean, I was for a little bit, but I got over it. But Bethune, and I tell everybody this, everybody ain't able, because I would have been at the beach every day. I probably would have just been sitting by the water. It, it's so pretty, but, you know, so you might have some people that watch the replay that might be like, shout out classmates, shout out Mary's baby, you know. So what was the determinant factor that made you like, look, I need to go to this school? I'm leaving Wilberforce. I need to go to, was it the cold weather? What was it? Well, you know, well, let me tell you, because I have to take my hat off to Wilberforce. I told my mother I had to go to a historically black college. And my mother definitely was in agreement. I told my father the same thing. And my brothers had attended uh, Howard University. Oh, wow. My mother said, I want you to be close to home. And so she said, you should go to Wilberforce. And T.J. Haig, Naaman Haig. It was there were so many yourself. There were so many people who were at Wilberforce that I didn't want to miss that moment. So I got my things prepared, and Wilberforce opened the door wow. for me that I will always have respect for because here I was receiving a scholarship based off of a talent, and this is what I don't want young people to take for granted. Listen, if you have a talent, you better make full use of it because it can open the doors for so many things. And that's what Wilberforce did for me. So just like it, Wilberforce is in history, starting it all off, being the first, um, this is what happened in my life. It was the first to actually shine in my life and give me an opportunity. Wow. And so at Wilberforce, I learned and found so many friends and just learned so much about the culture and it was amazing especially when we were right across the street from central state and you know you just can't really <laughs> ask for anything more just what a good time and like you said what kind of stories do we have thank you jesus for no recording during that period of time but we, we just had a good time we had a good time and we knew how to do the HBCU and be proud and just really be thankful. And, and the opportunities that were presented to us were amazing. Well, after seeing um, Bethune Cookman, I love the beach, I love the water, I love the ocean. Yeah, so I went from River <laughs> Forest who started it all, to Bethune Cookman with a with the first woman on one dollar and fifty cent Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh oh, you've been way awesome. <laughs> I had to tell her too. They paved the way also. And so I was grateful because here I am at the ocean in the warm weather, you know, and, and the path being paved from Wilberforce to here. And there's so many connections. Wow. You wouldn't believe. I, there was a Kevin Southall. He went to Wilberforce and also ended up at Bethune Cookman. Wow. Just so many different stories. Yes. So to be a student of an HBCU, I know that many times people try to underrate it, but you just don't get any better. And I say that with so much passion, not to judge anyone else's school, but the history, the richness, those who came before us. Mm. I'm just, you know, that I'm elated just because of that. And so ended up at Bethune off of another scholarship. Well, here I was with my Black universities saying to me, we believe in you, we invest in you, we are giving time for you and money. So we put our money where our mouth is and our mouth where our money is. And I'm telling you, this is what paved the way for me because I had others that believed in me and mm -hmm. I didn't even know what was in me. I think I, not I think, I know you've heard the story before, Ms. Gregory from Wilberforce, she was oh, the one that let me know. She said, you know, you're going to be in a... Hey, you know, she, when she said that, she spoke it 
up in my life. Mm. Wow. There are many who will believe in you, but not everybody is going to uh, believe in you enough to push the dream. That's fact. And here she was, this woman. Oh my God. That pushed that dream and she lit that thing on fire and she created a vision for my life. Wow. Because I was in the process of just, uh, and still to this day, it's amazing because I, I feel like I hear the voices of my ancestors saying, continue to press forward. Mm -hmm. When I got to uh, Bethune Cookman College, there was Dr. Steele, Dr. Rebecca Steele. Wow. who surprisingly had been at FAMU previously over the band. And oh, wow. here she was coming up with Bookman. So, so many connections and so many people who I've had the honor of being able to stay in contact with that, you know, continue to say, press on my sister, press on. And so that's just a little bit of the story, but that's how I ended up at Bethune Cookman is that a scholarship was offered and that beach was calling my name. And Mary <laughs> McLeod Bethune left her handprint in our history and it pulled me in that direction. And I've never been the same since. Just grateful. Uh, yeah, because I remember you. I remember because we walked out through that place like we like we lived there when we was on tour. And I was like, you really about to go here, friend? He's like, I'm gone. I said, okay, then. And I looked up and you was gone. Like, you didn't play no games about it. So, I mean, but everything <laughs> happens for a reason. A season and lifetime. So, I, I get it. I was, I'm not going to lie, I was upset. Oh, wow. You made it work. So, it was wonderful. Amazing. So, um, sure. yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see. You said, yeah. <laughs> Um, as we are, well, you say everything has a reason, reason, season, and lifetime. Reason, yes. season, and lifetime. Yes, yes. And like I said, I, mm -hmm. I was really glad, you know. And as before, I mean, you know me, I'm a cheerleader for all my friends, you know, sometimes my enemies too. But, well, no, my enemies, I cheer for them too. But, <laughs> To see all of us that had that humble beginning and to see where we are now is like, oh my goodness, you know? Yeah, pretty glad that, you know, we couldn't, they couldn't factor, replay a video of anything that we may have done. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a blessing. <laughs> so, it is. Um, <laughs> it is. It is. But look, you made me think about Kamal Smith and doing his movies. You made yes. me think about. I mean, TJ and his music, yes. his teaching, you know, so many, I mean, chefs, lawyers, doctors, so many, you maybe think about your stuff as you continue to connect us all, and so that is so profound to me, you know, that's amazing, I know I always say there's not a place where you've arrived, you have to continue mm -hmm. to press forward, you know, and so yeah. that's what I remind myself daily, some days great, some days okay, some days wonderful, but I've never just arrived. It's always a part of a journey, you know, to continue to walk forward and to remember who, who plays the trail for me, you know? So I ain't arrived. We keep on moving forward. You got to. You got every day is something new. And I I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm one of those that if I feel like I'm not learning nothing, then that is not a productive, successful day. Like I have to learn something new every day. And that's... You know, that's just my my philosophy on it. But like you mentioned, you know, we do have some some heavy hitters. I know we have one classmate. I bought her journal. Um, I don't know if you were there when she was there. But when I say that journal is powerful, um, her name is uh, Dr. Satira Streeter. I don't know her married name, so I might be wrong. But go on Amazon and get that yes. journal. The journal is like. Yes, we have the support of and, that, and that's the gap that a lot of people don't get. Everything. Like, you know, we're not crabs trying to get out the bucket or trying to pull somebody down. We're trying to lift each other up because if I'm winning, you winning too. And once we get that, we'll nail it. <laughs> once we get that concept. 
But where can we purchase your books? Are your books on Amazon as well? Yes. Yes, they. So we can go on Amazon and just type in your name, or we would have to type in the book title. Uh oh, I don't know, Tifo. I hear you. Support. Yes, I'm one hundred percent. We want to continue to do that support and just back each other up. You know, um, I always I imagine this. What if we, everyone who has the, the you might have to reach HBCU, they graduated go. from an HBCU, would take that same time money and that's once or twice a year or three, and the type of strong foundation we would have. And, mm -hmm. and even in say, yeah, yeah. So that that's something amazing to me. That's something that we would definitely have to like look into doing. I know yes, the sound is is acting up a little bit. So I don't know if everything was heard, but um for the most part it was. But do you have any um as we come to a close, do you have any parting words that you would tell a a new freshman or a graduating senior from um from high school? of how to get ready for their journey to success. I mean, cause school, yeah, you know, school is school. Do what you do, have fun, take care of your grades, take care of your yes. kids. Determination is half the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take, have fun, take care of your grades. Determination is half the battle. Remember to never give up. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember um, my grandmother on my mother's side saying, but my grandmother on my, uh, you got it, you got it, you can do it, you can do it. So if, you can, if you hear, never give up on one side and you hear, you can do it on the next side, guess what? Honey, I'm telling you, you have your elders who are now uh, my ancestors, you know, in, in passing, um, that spoke into my life and continue to. Never underestimate the words of a wise man or a wise woman and, and try your hardest. You stay humble because yes. being haughty will never do anything. It will never really get you anywhere. But we all need each other. And there, again, there's not a place when you just have a ride. Take that advice and that wisdom from your teachers, the educators, the elders within your community and things like that. And, um, Watch how things go. It's a it's more of a smooth path if we can do it that way versus mm -hmm. thinking we just know everything because we will never. Mm -mm. None of us will ever know everything there is to know. And that that we'll never oh. give up. <laughs> that is very very true, and I, I can't and agree stay humble. That part right there, you gotta say that like three more times because. <laughs> You, you can't get to a point where you feel like you have, have arrived. You have to always remain humble, but you also have to remain teachable. That, that part too. But I do um, totally thank you for coming on. I know we're experiencing some um, trouble with sound, but the content is here. Um, so I would like for everybody to thank, um, to continue watching. We do have Wednesdays and Sundays. And if you are interested, <laughs> in being a guest, uh, by all means, reach out to me, hit me in my inbox, hit us at the email, um, mrobinson at ABCU Futures Incorporated, or um, just reach out, period. So we do totally thank you for tuning in today. If you haven't purchased your Mother's Day brunch tickets, mother-daughter brunch tickets, those are available on Eventbrite. And if you are out of town, you can also donate and I'll find a mother and daughter pair to give it to. So uh, thank you again, and we will see you next time. Girl. Thank you. <laughs>